Hello and welcome to another Demon 212 PSV, uh, PSN review. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Castle Storm, which is available on the PS3 as well, and part of me thinks if you buy one version you get them both, but the only version for me was the PS Vita version, and I'll explain that. It's not because it's like exclusive or anything like that, it's not a hipster thing or anything, it's because of my vision. And looking at a tiny little crosshair type thing, a tiny little line for aiming on a huge screen is really, really bad for me. Whereas instead, looking at a smaller line on a smaller screen where I can see more of the screen without needing to move my eyes or my head or anything, to move it around to see it. And obviously I can hold it closer to me face for if I need to help see for fine tuning. So for me, after playing... The Xbox version, the PC version, the... I don't think I did get around to playing the PS3 demo, but I definitely played the demos on the other two, and then finally when the Vita version came out, I thought, yeah, this is the one that I'm going to play. I decided I'd wait to see what DLC came out, and this is the complete version, so I'm going to be mentioning the DLC and that, and uh, I'm glad I waited to get it, because £12 for the full game, I think's a decent price. Um... At the start, you can probably see, uh, as I've been on the screen for a long time, and I apologise, you've got single player, multiplayer, trophies, scoreboards, helping options, and downloadable content, which I've already got that, so there's no need to press that. Helping options, you've got basics of how to play, you've got your controls, which you can view, but you can't change. You can view your castle controls and your hero controls. You've got your settings, where you've got some basic audio and some basic game. The inversion, for all of them, as far as I'm concerned, is horrific because it is not your usual inversion it's uh, the sort of thing that immediately i went in and i thought oh yeah i'm going to want to invert the aim of the bow i'm going to want to invert the aim of the ballista uh if you have to aim with a shield fine i'll aim with that too for high and low and then it turns out it doesn't invert it in the way you think it plays terrible and i had to switch them off immediately to actually make the game playable um multiplayer there's a few things you can do. You can go on versus survival and hero survival, and you can obviously play it with with one other person. I believe is the maximum. Um, I've not been able to actually get a game on the multiplayer at all. Uh, it's one of those on the Wii U version. I think you can play it local from what I was gathering on reviews, but obviously don't quote me on that because I don't have the Wii U version. I didn't even realize it was out on the Wii U, if I'm honest. Uh, the amount of things that don't come to that system anymore, it, it, ours has basically turned into a dust box until the next new Nintendo game comes out, which is usually a Mario title. And that's not me having to go at the Wii U, that's me kind of having to go at Nintendo for doing nothing with it. Seriously, if you want a Vita and you're sick of people saying there's no games, there's no games. Trust me, there's a ton on this compared to that thing. Um, and it's just incredibly infuriating, but that's a rant for a different video, and I apologise. Um, anyway, I haven't been able to find a game on the multiplayer, so I haven't been able to test it myself, but I've read a few things, and, and they're basically saying it, it's decent but limited. It's something that you can probably sink half an hour to an hour into to give you extra gameplay, because people were complaining about the length of the game, and personally, I don't see it. I actually know people on Steam who've put 12, 13 hours in and still hadn't even started the DLC yet. It's an absolutely massive game. Um, you've got, on the single player, you've got Campion, which is self-explanatory, and that's what I'm going to be showing off. You've got the Skirmish, which again, self-explanatory, you just play a Skirmish, you don't play any story or anything. Survival is, again, you just see how long you can survive. And Hero Survival, you see how long you can survive playing as the hero. You've got four Campions overall, and I'm not going to show any of the, of the advanced stuff off and ruin about spoiling anything for people. Um, but basically, you've got... A regular campaign where the goal is to get 190 stars out of 190 stars to 100% it. Uh, you get 5 stars a level and that it, in case you don't want to do the math I'll be doing it very soon. Because you've then got a second campaign which you can unlock. You've then got the two DLC campaigns which are each another 100 stars and that's 110. So that's 500 stars overall divided 5 stars per level. You get 100 levels. That's massive for £12. And you get extra heroes in that as well, I believe, in the DLC packs. I didn't really look into them because I thought, well, I'm going to be buying the complete anyway, so it'll just be a nice surprise to see what I get. Uh, so I do believe you get new factions and uh, new heroes and stuff that are limited to the DLC. Um, 
For the start, I'm going to go on to the very first level because it's actually a tutorial and it's the best tutorial I've ever played. Uh, and I'm not just saying that, it really is something that's absolutely fantastic because it does a perfect explanation of showing you exactly how to play the game without holding your hand too much and without making you go through hour after hour of the same stuff. It doesn't go, have you got this? Right, well, do it another seven times to prove that you've got this. You know, it just does it once. Um... Before you go into a level, once you've unlocked certain stuff, you can go to your castle, you can change your difficulty, which that's one of the star requirements. You can get two stars for the difficulty. And playing it on normal, you get one star. Playing it on easy, you get zero stars. Playing it on hard, you get two stars. And for now, I'll just be playing it on normal, I suppose, because that's what I've beat this level on. Uh, you've then got your equipment, which you can basically unlock and buy new things and then upgrade things. So, for example, here on this file, I can pay 2,000 gold to get a level 2 javelin, which they fire from your ballista. And it's very expansive how much you can actually do with it and how much you can upgrade. And it's, again, what adds more multi like more time into it without needing to even touch the multiplayer at that point. Uh, it's just something that you can level up certain things so you can then go back into levels and see if you can do them better and that and it works really well uh, and as I say what with there being 100 levels it, it's, it is definitely giving you a huge reason to play if you get addicted to it even if you don't want to 5 star everything you know it's still going to give you a lot of time but if you do want to 5 star at all it's going to give you even more time um, loading is okay it could be a bit better considering i don't see what it has to load sometimes if you know what i mean like levels aren't exactly i mean this one here isn't huge but the loading took a decent chunk um but the the whole level if it lets me pan the camera which to be fair i don't think it lets me pan the camera until i've actually got to the point where it tells me how to pan the camera um but my castle's there and then there's a about another section the same size as that in between my castle and their castle and then there's their castle so it's only about three times the size of this so i don't see what it has to load a lot of the time and ah there's the the panning of the camera there and the camera controls work okay and you can zoom out you can zoom in um the playing field is essentially for you you don't do anything with that that that's what the enemy does so your playing field is you've got your ballista there and then you've got your um a little bit of path there that you can walk on as a hero or send your troops on and then you've got their castle which you have to destroy with a blister uh so for now oh i've also without even realizing i hadn't mentioned it or anything that i'm using the touch screen to move the camera too so i forgot to mention that and all of a sudden i'm doing i'm controlling it with it and thinking i should probably mention it so it teaches you just as i say in basics just as you go along and this is going to be the hardest part for us because the vita is about two feet away from me face at the moment and i'm back to wishing that i could play it on a small screen right up close but i still managed to get a headshot yay i think that was more out of reflex memory than anything else because of learning how to hold the ballista um the whole point though it basically tells you your objective as you go along. So there, that's my flag, and I've now got to go rescue it. And this is what I mean by this being a really good tutorial, because it, it doesn't hold your hand, and it does it pretty swiftly. It then informs you straight away what units you can build, how much food it costs. Your food's in the bottom left corner, and it regenerates constantly. I think the maximum food you can hold is 100, if you let it get up to 100. And uh, you can have, uh, well, at the moment I can have five units out, and once that's max, then I have to wait until someone dies. I can still use the ballista to kill the enemies while I'm sending people out. So it's a case of you've got to watch your castle, watch your men. You've got to defend your men, defend your castle, defend your flag. And then you've got to do this, that and the other. It's like all at the same time. Everyone has said that it's one of those games that the most thing you've got to learn is not about how to play tower defense games. It's how to multitask because it is absolutely insane. The amount of stuff it wants you to do at any one point. Uh, once I've done this flag part, because I realised I've kind of messed that up and they got the flag because I was too busy explaining, not realising that they were walking towards the flag, then it takes you into uh, what you can do with destroying the castle. And I've heard a lot of people, and I don't know if they're joking or if they're trying to be serious, but I've heard a lot of people say it's Angry Birds-like, and I don't think it's anything at all like Angry Birds. For one thing, I can't stand Angry Birds personally, because it's a game more of luck than skill. It's the sort of thing that the amount of times you can do a shot 
like three times identical shot in the exact same way obviously all three times in a row and you'll get completely different results and I can't stand that about the game whereas this you do have to actually have skill with your shots. You've got to learn when uh, when's the best time to detonate the apples, which are the bombs, or to break up the boulders into more rocks so that they can uh, do more damage. And it's just this, that, and the other. It's just mental, the things you can do, uh, and the things that you have to learn how to play it. There's also, as I say, controlling a hero, which is what I'm doing now, and basically the hero's got, like, sla well, hack and slash attacks of just bashing square. He can jump, he can put his shield up to defend himself he can pull out a bone arrow or fire arrows just like the air uh, ballista CM controls uh, you can hold triangle to teleport him back when danger is imminent or anything like that and the only thing I've got a slight problem with how the heroes react is when you've got the bone arrow out if you get hit then he immediately puts it away and X is to fire the bone arrow so quite often I'll get hit and then I'll jump just accidentally because I was trying to fire an arrow um, as well as being able to upgrade and the uh, abilities that you've got with your ballista and that uh, you can basically choose what you want because you might have noticed I've got five slots on the uh, building of men and I've got five slots on the ballista and basically that's where the strategy comes in you've got to choose what you want and what's best to do the, the to take into each level um, there's also the, the only button I haven't mentioned really that you can do something with as well as L and R which cycles through them is the uh, circle button which is basically tells you meant to duck and cover. Uh, that, that's probably the best way to put it because that's exactly what it is. You basically do that and then I'll try and demonstrate it to be fair because I believe I've got men on the map. Right, so there's some over there. I've hit circle and that's exactly what they've done. They've ducked and covered and... It's just, again, a testament to the amount of things that you're going to have to learn to do and multitask with uh, because you've got to keep an eye on everything at the same time. And it can be a little bit daunting at first, but you do get into the swing of things and it works really well. Uh, one of the cool things is you, these ballistas, you've already seen, uh, were shooting the enemies with the arrows, with like the spears and that. You can do that with anything. So if there's a huge group of enemies coming and you fire a bomb, then you can wipe them all out and it charges a meter and you go into a fury where you can just fire things really quickly. And it, it's incredibly cool to be able to have that ability and that power up. It basically means that you're going to want to kill a load of enemies using special things. There's no guarantee I'll be able to set this up, but what with three of them there... I uh, killed them with the, the uh, bomb, but it didn't give us it, unfortunately. And it's a bit of a shame, because I would have liked to have at least been able to show it off. But it is just insane mode, I suppose, the way to do it. Like, berserk mode. Uh, if you've ever played the original Doom, it's probably the best way to describe it. So, I think I've waffled on more than long enough. By now, you'll have seen everything that the game has to offer, and you're going to know if you're going to like it or not. I've already said how big it is, and it really is massive for only £12. I think that's more than a fair price for it. Um, and it, it's just something that I would love to see Zen Pinball continue with. Uh, sorry, Zen Pinball is their, their other game. Zen Studios is the name of the developer, of course. And I'd love to see them carry on with it and do a Castle Storm 2 at some point. Because I think this is just my sort of game. It was right up my alley and I always knew it would be. And I'm glad it came to the Vita so I could actually play it and experience it. Because I was just feeling abysmally on the uh, demos of the, the big screen ones. Because what with my eyesight. Um, the only things I haven't really mentioned is story-wise, it's decent. It's good enough. Um, it's nothing epic award wing or anything. But it's good enough. Graphically... It takes a noticeable hit playing it on the Vita compared to the other versions, but it's more than good enough again. And musically, it's decent, but it's nothing, again, to write home about. It's basically the focus on the gameplay, and the other stuff has suffered a little bit, but it's not suffered to the point of it being a bad game in any way. It's just good enough. So if you're one of those people who has to play something that's got an epic story, that has epic graphics and epic mu music the entire time, and you think gameplay is secondary, then it's probably not the game for you. But if you're not, then I'd imagine you're going to sink many, many an hour into this, just like myself and thousands of others have already done so. So there we go then. That's been the review. I hope you found it helpful. I don't score the games because that's based purely on opinion. So instead, I'll leave you to make your own mind up. So thanks for watching, and if you've got any questions about the game that I didn't answer in the vid or that hasn't been answered in the comments, then feel free to ask and I'll help if I can. 
Also, if you did find it helpful, don't forget to check out my channel because there's plenty more like this up there. And don't forget to subscribe because there'll be plenty more to come as well. So until next time, this has been Demon212, signing off.